Yeah, hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. Finally we are here. The worst performing TD in tier 10. We've charted our journey from, T from tier 6, looking at the worst performing tanks in every class from tier 6 all the way up to this, the final video in this series. The worst performing tech tree TD in tier 10, and it shouldn't be any surprise. It is, of course, the Death Star, also known as the FV215183, the British meme tank, the TD at tier 10. But look, don't take my word for it, because this is not all about my opinion, although in this case, I absolutely loathe this tank. But it's Blitz stars that I get the information from, and let's have a look at what they have to say. Boom, there you go. This is the list of the worst performing tanks based on win rate, by the way. And you can see there that the 183 has a 48% win rate. It has an average damage, surprisingly, of 1,880, which is better than the Badger, but worse than all the others. It has a survival rate of 34%, which is better than the FV005, better than the Griller, but uh, it, 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 you know, which surprised me. The credit coefficiency is absolutely pants at 77%, and it has the kills per battle of 778. So, what is it about this tank? Well, the thing is, if you look how many battles have been played, 2,000. 527. It is by far the most played tier 10 TD by the player base. Why is that? Well, that is because everybody knows that you can go out in this tank and blast the bejesus out of little tanks like the Bat Chat or stuff. And this is a tank, as I say, it's a mean tank. Okay, it's a one trick pony, in fairness. You know, it's got that amazingly insane hesh that can just decimate through any light-skinned tank. Thing is, this is a tank that can take you from hero to zero in as many games. And the reason why I loathe this tank is because whenever I see somebody in a 183, I have a shiver come down my spine. Now, either they're a very good player and therefore they're going to do what they need to do, aka they're going to be a hero or they're a relatively newish player and they're just jumping in it because they want to blast something to kingdom come the zero player and this tank has that ability now i've always argued realistically that the badger should have been the tech tree tank in the british line and this should have been the premium tank but that's not what it is, is it? The Badger is a collector, this is the tech tree, and that's what, at the end of the day, that's, that's exactly what it is. But what is it about this tank that ruins its win rate? Well, a lot is the honest answer. So we're gonna jump into its parameters in the garage, and we're gonna have a look at, is there anything not good about this tank? Jumped into the garage now, and we're going to have a look at the parameters of this tank. Not that there are many. Already you can see hit points, 1,908. Now, in fairness, it has, a, it has been buffed armor-wise. The, the Wargaming basically changed the turret, and we'll look at that later. Main armament, well, we've got on the turret frontally 132 millimeters. That's not too bad. And on the front of the hull, 132 millimeters. On the sides and the rear of the turret, 106 and 79 respectively. On the hull, 53 and 79 respectively. This is not an Everly Harmer tank. Let's not kid ourselves. View range, well, it's not great. 264 meters, but it is a TD. Camo in concealment. Oh, this thing sticks out like a big sore thumb on, I don't know, a, a big plate. So it's only got 43% when stationary, and I'm running it with a camo net, which increases that. 34% when moving, and only 2% when firing. You can fire this thing from anywhere in the map, it can just go bing, insta spot. DPM, 2801. Not that good when you think about it. Penetration, well, 
Its AP, which is its standard ammunition, is 315. That's nice, that's beautiful. That will slice through most things. Its Hesh, that's the gun that everybody likes to load, is 242. And its HE, which if you're running Hesh, you don't need HE, is 101. Reload time, oh, that's almost 20 seconds. And that is what makes one of the Achilles heels for this tank. I mean, it's just, you might as well go and make a cup of tea, wait for the tank to reload. Damage, however, well, this is where it starts coming into its own. Firstly, on its AP, 930 is its I end alpha. On the Hesh and on the HE, it's exactly the same, 1300. And I'll get to the ammunition loadout in a moment. Aim time. Again, this is the other problem with this tank. 5.3 seconds. I mean, it takes an eternity for that reticle to come down. It really does. Dispersion. Another Achilles heel on this tank. 0 0.350. Now, if you remember, dispersion is where the shower will go inside the reticle and the dispersion on this means it can go anywhere it can go to the other map it can go nowhere near where you fire it if you're trying to fire from distance because that's 100 meters okay so for every 100 meters the, the shell is just doing this it's not an accurate tank what about the gun depression five degrees it's not a ridgeline haul down monster even though you think it is five degrees is pretty pants going up those 15 not too bad left and right 45 degrees that's not too bad so it gets to 45 degrees before the the hall starts turning and you start resetting and losing your camo profile if you're running a camo net carrying on down speed well the speed is mm, it's 34 going forwards top speed 14 going backwards with an average speed of 22 on flat ground or down a hill with the wind behind you if you slide to put this up the hill you know you're back into tortoise territory you're going to be uh, 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 like that going through terrain crossing ability it ain't the best 61 percent on the road 55 percent on the ground and 44 percent in the water Oh, this tank is just, wow, it's, it's, it's a meme, let's be honest. Let's have a look at the equipment before we look at the armor, because the equipment's interesting. So, I'm running it with calibrated shells. Why? Well, it gives me that extra penetration. If I do it with a gun rammer, then the reload time comes down by one second. That's not really going to do anything. It doesn't help in the slightest, not really. So, I'm just running it with calibrated shells, just making sure I pen. I then got the defense system because that's what I always run and ironically I've now got a camo net. I am not using the optics here. Why? Because to be perfectly honest with you I don't need the view range to be big. If I stick in the optics the view range goes up by 13 meters. I need to rely on the other tanks out there in my team lights and mediums to do the spotting for me. I'm running a camo net because if I don't, while well, stationary, this thing drops 14 points. It becomes like 30, <laughs> it becomes like 33%. It's just absolutely crazy. And moving, it drops seven points, brings it down to 20 something percent. And when firing, it's only 1%. So that's why I'm running a camo net. I'm then using the enhanced gun laying device. Why? Because the aim time is so long. If I don't have that, then the aim time actually goes up to like almost six seconds. Now, look, I could use the supercharge, but the, the velocity of the, of the gun is not too bad. It's that aim time that I need. I'm then putting it with extra hit points. Um, although I sometimes put it with the 4%, to be honest with you. I mean, that's just personal preference. I'm then using it with the engine accelerator, not for the speed, but for the rotation ability. I'm then using a refined gun. Why? Because the dispersion on this thing is terrible. It is just absolutely shocking. So that's why I'm using the refined gun. There's no point using the vertical stab. It's going to bring the aim time down, but to be honest with you, I'm going to be sat predominantly at the back waiting to land that shot. I therefore need a refined gun more than I need my aim time reduced. I'm then using a toolbox as standard and high-end consumables. Looking at the consumables, well, it doesn't come with many, so I'm using engine power boost because I want just a little bit of oomph when I can. 
I'm using the multi restoration restore pack because why wouldn't you? And I'm using adrenaline because maybe, just maybe, I can drop it and get a better reload time. Onto the provisions, again, this one doesn't come with much. I'm using pudding in tea to make the crew work a little bit harder. I'm using the protective kit, again, because I just want that protection. And then to get the crew working even harder, I'm also running black tea. Now we're gonna look at the ammo loadout. You will see I am running no HE, zero. I am running eight HESH and seven AP. I see some people rolling out with both HESH and HE. There's no point, guys. Your HESH gives you more penetration for the same damage as your HE. There is no reason to run HE on this tank, okay? If you are running HE, mainly because of the cost, then you're gonna suffer with penetration. You really should only be loading AP and HESH, nothing else. Everything else apart from that is just daft because you're just, you're not doing yourself a favor. Yes, it costs more because it does. I mean, the round, the H, the HESH round is quite expensive and the loadout of this tank is only 15. So I'm loading more HESH than AP, but only one more. The chances are I'm never gonna get through all of that. Now let's go and have a look at its armor. We're jumping into Armour Inspector, and this is what the 183 looks like facing off against what is currently the best performing tier 10 heavy, the Type 71. And as you can see, frontally, it's just wide open. I mean, the armor on this thing isn't great. To be honest with you, you can get some shot traps with this new enhanced turret, I mean, like there, but this side then becomes wide open. Even if I stick this thing all down, which isn't great, yes, the cheeks become difficult, but everything else is the same. And this thing just never has at good armor. Can it side scrape? Can it bugger? Of course it can't. This thing is just, I mean, you will get these bounces on it. Um, anybody, you know, anybody who's played against a 183 recently, the turret armor can be a little bit trolly, as you can see when I, when I wiggle the turret here. And you will get some auto bounces every now and then. But for all intents and purposes, it has no armor and everybody's going to pen you. So, yeah, the armor is pretty bad. So what is the downside to this tank? Well, it's got no armor, number one. Number two, it's got a really long reload. Number three, it's got a totally inaccurate gun. Number four, it's got really bad camo. And number five, it's not exactly fast. And this is the thing. But why, oh why, do so many people play it? And is that right? Well, so many people play it, as I say, because it's, it's just a mean tank. And, you know, they, they go out there, they see that this thing can smack everything to kingdom come, and therefore, they just want to roll out in it and do what they can to, to wreck somebody's day. And that's the thing about the FV215183, uh, aka Death Star. And it's appropriately named because it really can wreck somebody very quickly. Thing is, as I said, this is a hero to zero tank. You can have a great game in it. You can smack everybody to kingdom come and then you can have totally shocking games. So what we're gonna do is gonna see two replays. Now, as I said, I'm not a fan of this tank. I really don't like this tank um, because it is for me a one trick pony. It is fun to go out and have a bit of a fun time in it, but you know, it, it's not a serious tank. We're gonna show you two games, which are hero to zero, or in this case, zero to hero. Rolling out on Halas, always a good thing. Um, I mean, <laughs> well, where do you stick this tank? It's big, it's tall, it's slow, it's cumbersome. So you've gotta find your way around the map to find your optimal position with this tank. Once again, I'm tuned up with my long suffering two mate heifer lump, he is in a Leo one, and we can see that the tanks are presenting, so I'm going to go slightly up this hill, use its very mediocre 5 degrees gun depression as much as I can, whilst keeping the rocks to the right-hand side. And 415 Hesh into the, two one, the 121. Okay, we smacked him. We didn't get a high roll. We got a low roll, but I just wanted to smack him, basically. And this is where the tank starts to become a, he a zero rather than a hero. Because the Hesh, if you, if you get the Hesh wrong, then 
you know, you're just going to be low rolling all the time. And after 20 seconds of reload, the most frustrating thing about this tank is the fact that you're going to low roll more times than you think. Now, AP, yeah, the AP wouldn't have gone through the turret there at the 121, which is why I used the Hesh. I just wanted to smack him, basically. And this is what most 183 players just want to do. They just want to smack the enemy. However, you can have fun in this tank, as I said. I mean, it is a fun tank. With some games, you will do massive damage. Some games, you will do shed loads of no damage. <laughs> That's just the way it works. But it does have a redeeming feature, and that is exactly this. Goodbye. 1400, out the bat, just like that, with a Hesh. High rolled him, and he's gone. <laughs> so within the space of two shelves, I've knocked out 1800. And, you know, that's why people like to play the 183. Because they have the ability to do exactly that. They have the ability to wreck somebody else's game. But the thing is... Oh, look, you see the dispersion on that? I mean, that was like an easy shot, much easier than the, than the shot I played on the 121 earlier. And it just went, nah, we're not going to play today. The dispersion is just not going to let you play. Now, it would be pointless me smacking him again, to be honest with you. It's a waste of an ammunition and it's a waste of my time. I've got to wait 20 seconds for the darn thing to reload. So there's no point in absolutely smacking him. We are actually losing this game. It's three against three now. Now the 121 is down. But they've got two heavies and a TD. We've got a medium, a light, and me in a 183. I've only done 1800 damage. I'm not setting any world records here, and I'm trying to get the. Sh I'm trying to get to position where I can get shots on. No matter where I go, I'm going to be spotted because it's got a two percent rating when it's fired. It's got a 30% rating when it's moving. I mean, look, I mean, even when I stick it behind a blimmin' rock, I'm getting spotted. And there's really not much I can do about that. I'm going to try and snapshot the grill. Yeah, good luck with that one. Uh, no, ain't going to happen. <laughs> Welcome to the world of the Death Star. Okay, we're going to try and intercept the gorilla because he's going to go around there and I've got my Hesh loaded and I think he's going to pop up around the corner so we're going to try and intercept him. Unless he ammo racks me, he can't take me down. There he is! And the dispersion says, no, we're going to hit the back of the map. <laughs> this is the thing about the 183. You can be a zero in the game quite easily because the gun is just so inaccurate. Look, I could have waited an extra second or so for that reticle to come down, but I thought I was close enough for it not to matter. But the dispersion said, no, you're not. <laughs> it's going to go to the back of the map, and you're just going to have to deal with that. 1800 is all we're going to get out of the game because we got the bases. And, you know, that's the thing about this tank. And this is why I can't stand it. I mean, okay, it's, it's one of those things. We actually get a third class in this game. Not because we did anything spectacular. Because we didn't. I mean, it was just like that. So that like, meh. But that's the 183. That is more than your typical average game, to be honest with you. Because most people die. And most 183 players, you know, just meh. And as you can see, because you're using hash, you're just throwing credits away. It's as simple as that. But let's see what it can do when you go from a zero to a hero. Now we're on Oasis Palms, and as I said previously, the trick to this tank is finding a good position. And that ain't easy, okay? So you need to know your maps, number one. You really do need to know your maps. Positioning is everything for this tank. If you get the wrong position, everybody's gonna light you up like a Christmas tree. So you've got to try and do your best to position and wait a look at this ST. Did we hit him? I think we did. Uh, because I didn't see it bounce on the back of the map. I fired. I'm basically losing all my camo profile, so I'm going to relocate. I'm going to relocate behind this rock area. And hopefully, hopefully I can get this TVP. But uh, again, just waiting for that reticle to come down. Can I get the TVP? Oh, he just moves as I fires. That is so frustrating because now I've got to wait another 20 seconds for, him to, for this tank to load up. And it's like, oh my life, could it get any worse? But not to worry, we're going to stay here because I can see that they're all around there. And here comes a bat chat, and nope, we can't get him, but we can get the TVP. Ah, 1200, straight out the 
gun barrel down goes the TVP. Bye. And there you go, one shot. So we did that with the T57 Heavy and we had fun. Now the Bat Chat's giving me a hard time. He's in the clan LA's, they're a pretty decent clan. So I'm worried about these two because they're tuning up. But uh, the other Bat Chat's coming round and goodbye Bat Chat. There goes 1100, now up to 2478. Trying to relocate again, trying to make sure that we don't stay out in the open as long as we can. We're only, we've only done 2,400. Again, we're not setting the world on fire. But this is a more of a hero game than the last game, to be honest with you. Uh, they've only got three tanks left. There's no way I'm going to get to the E100. There's no way I'm going to get to those two, because this tank is just so slow and slow cumbersome. Uh, my toon mate takes down the bat chat. The E100's over there behind a rock. I can't smack him, but he goes down. There's just the STB1 left, and... I can't do anything about it. So 2,478 is the damage that we dished out there. But is it? Did we actually get that shot on the STB1? Hmm. Yes, we did. 3,326. We perma-destroyed two of them. We only get a third class again. But you know what? That is, for me, a successful game in the 183. A tank... I really do not like, I never have liked, and I get the top damage. The 183, I mean, zero to hero, hero to zero, whatever you want to call it, one trick pony, whatever you want to say. It's a mean tank, it's a bit of fun. You can play this tank well, but you just need to know your maps and you need to know where to position the darn thing. So that is the Death Star 183, I've been Fujit. This is a tank that, well, you know, it was always going to be the worst performing TD in tier 10. Mainly because so many people play it and they play it because they want to one shot the enemy team. You can do that, but the thing about this tank is if you are a serious player and you want to play this tank seriously, then you really need to understand those weaknesses. And there are numerous weaknesses in this tank. Once you get over the weaknesses, then and only then can you start playing the tank to its strengths, which is that absolutely obscene penetration on both the Hesh and the AP. The thing is, location, location, location is everything with this tank. Okay, You've got to get it into a position whereby you are relatively safe. However, even then, the moment you press that fire button, a fire button everybody on the map is absolutely going to see you you will be lit up like a christmas tree the 183 can be good fun don't get me wrong i mean there's nothing more satisfying than seeing a you know a tank disappear in front of your eyes in one shot i'm not saying there isn't but majority of the player base play this one just dreadfully they stick it in the wrong place they they don't wait for the reticle to come down they they don't relocate and they don't generally play the tank well which is why it has an horrendous win rate the thing is it's never been a great tank it never has been it never will be it is just one of those tanks whereby it's very hit and miss i've seen some of the best players in the game roll out in this thing and do zero and by token i've seen some of the mediocre players in this game roll out and do 7k that is what this tank is capable of doing. It is capable of sending you to the highest mountain or the deepest of Mariana's trenches. It's a fun tank, don't get me wrong. It's not a serious tank. It is a one-trick pony. Anyway, as I said, that has been the 215-183 Death Star. I've been Fujit. Comment in everything below because I'm intrigued to find out what you think about this tank. And until next time, guys, remember... It's only a game, so stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking, because that really is what it's all about, having fun and being happy.